Hello and welcome to another Crusader Kings free video. Today we have the Dev Diary 4 Development and Buildings where we'll be looking off over Development and Buildings. Baronies and Counties and uh, what they do for you and what you can do with them. As seen in the map DD, Baronies are now physically present on the map. A group of Baronies makes up a greater unit called a County. We're brought here to the first image. Um, very very fancy looking. I appreciate the uh, design in the back here and how you can have a look at the castle. I am however interested as to whether or not in the full release this will be dynamic. Of course it's under development right now as the image tells us in bold writing but if there was the ability to have more dynamic and a variety, a diversity of castles if you will that would be great. What does concern me here is there's only limited amount of building slots. We see two out of five that's very low. In Crusading Kings 2 we had, what, 12? Maybe more? And uh, yeah, it's quite a concern. These developments and Ford level uh, we'll have to look into as the diaries come out. But so you've got a straight tax and you've got a, a lootable amount, you've got a levy and you've got a supply limit. All well and good information to know about when you first look up. This is also a terrific button. This, uh, you click on it, it will take you straight to where you're looking, which I assume you're already there, but hey, if you want to get closer to where you're already looking, there's a button for it. While certain things are still on a per barony level, such as buildings, two of the most important values you have to deal with are on a per county basis, development and control. Oh great, let's learn about control and development, shall we? The thing I was just mentioning. Development is the measurement of technological advancement and general infrastructure in a county. Development directly increases taxes and levies you get out of the holdings, and it also unlocks some other special options. Development increases very slowly across the duration of the game, and radiates outwards from high development counties to those nearby. For example, Constantinople, the city of the world's desire, starts with a very high development level. This will slowly spread outwards, good for the Greeks. Reaching the most remote areas, much slower than their Greek heartland, naturally there are other ways to increase your development, such as through the steward's increased development task. Although this is a very slow process, and usually only worth doing in certain counties, having terrain such as farmland or floodplains in your counties make them ideal candidates for development and when they have gotten some level of development you can just sit back and enjoy as it slowly spreads throughout the rest of your realm. So what I'm getting from this here is it'll be a dynamic way of your levies increasing. You won't have to build a building to get 50 more troops, you won't have to build a farm to get 120 more light infantry. Simply over time the population will dynamically change and I'm sure it can go downwards as well. The concern here would be the lack of your personal input. If it just happens in the background, sure you might be able to do certain things to increase it, but it's quite hands-off, more entry-level gameplay, which the core base might not be so behind. Let's go down to control here. Control, on the other hand, directly represents the power you have over the county. This naturally decreases during sieges and by forcefully seizing territory. Taking the place of the new administration modifiers from CK2. If you don't pace yourself and use your marshal to increase control in newly conquered territories, you might find yourself with a slew of useless land. This also increases the importance of keeping peasant rabble and similar nuisances out of your lands. Okay, terrific, so blobbing is off the menu. Probably not off the menu, but blobbing with uh, good control over land is off the menu. So they're going for a more historically accurate. Historically a county did not become an empire overnight. Rome was not built in days. They're quite often saying here but it's it's something which might upset the nerdier more map painters of the uh, of the fan base here but me myself I prefer the more role playing section so let's move on. Each county also has an opinion of their holder referred to as the popular opinion. 
This represents the sentiment of the local peasants, and tends to decrease if you're not of their culture or faith. Promoting the use of local lords, vassals of the local culture faith, to handle such territory for you, as converting it will take some time. Unhappy counties tend to cause problems down the line, more of this in another DD. So what we're getting here is uh, peasants are racist, which is very historically accurate for the uh, Middle Ages, so good, good for them. Let's move on. On to the holdings themselves. Each county will have a certain amount of slots available for baronies, with some being constructed at the start and others not. The three core types of holdings remain unchanged, castles, cities, and temples. They make up the majority of holdings on the map, each with their own main purpose. Castles provide levies and fortifications, cities provide taxes with a secondary focus on development, and temples provide an even mix of taxes and levies with a secondary focus on increasing control. This means that if you want a county to develop really fast, building many cities might be the thing for you. If you want a resilient, resilient domain, perhaps you prefer castles, etc. I like the artwork. The artwork here is very pretty. Incredibly pretty. I'm a huge fan of that. Based on the terrain of provinces, each holding has access to a number of buildings. Regular buildings primarily focus on increasing taxes and levies, with some secondary effects such as increasing fortifications or increasing supply. These are usually straight upgrades and are long-term investments that you should always consider, much like in our other games. Now we're brought here to some actual buildings, which is what I've been hoping for. The issue is there's only four takes three years, takes a lot of gold. So you have a straight increase to income here, which has the most income. You have a straight increase to levies here, which has the most levies. You have a mix here, which favors levies and has a minor income. And then you have a garrison increase, which also increases the income and fort level, of course. So you only have four options here. Unless there is a scroll, I can't... Ah, yes, there is a scroll. Excellent. So it's more varied whereas in the previous game you would click a building you would get a levy of a troop type here they've removed diversity of levy types and then you just have straight levies so it's, uh, it's not going to be so diverse in building your troop types as I preferred more of a uh, cavalry rich with a pikeman center lineup before now I have just straight levies and I, I do also have the uh, the retinue replacement but the buildings are more economical as well, so that'd be very interesting to deal with. Uh, very excited to get my hands on that. We'll see what it's like when we get some more access to it. To spice things up, we've also introduced the concept of duchy capital buildings. These buildings can only be built in the capital barony of any de jure duchy, limiting their availability across the map. To build them and have them be active, you need to hold their associated duchy title personally. This way you can't simply hoard counties in which you can build these special buildings. As just like in CK2, you will get severe penalties for holding too many duchies, personally. The buildings themselves are very expensive, but come in many flavours, allowing you to tailor your experience. The Military Academy's track of buildings increases the effectiveness of your knights and allows you to have more of them. Establishing marches will make the entire duchy more defensible. The siege workshops will increase the effectiveness of your troops trebuchets and so on. Leading us to uh, duchy buildings here, we have a military academy, giving us a high knight effect and more of them, but only plus two, which means they might be very limited, seeing as that is a 550 gold, five year constructed building. Marches, defender advantage plus two, dice rolls, good, I like dice rolls. Supply limits, plus 25, fort level, garrison, levy enforcements, all that, good, good, uh, good numbers there. Siege workshops, terrific. Siege weapon toughness, all well and good. Royal armories, we don't get to have a look at, but that'll be very interesting. I'm going to guess at that increasing your... Uh, I forget the word. Ah, man at arms. Your man at arms allowance, perhaps. More armories, more diversified military. Let's finish off here. We also have the concepts of special buildings. These aim to represent historical buildings, both ancient and those building, built during the time period. Placed in uh, predetermined baronies on the map, you have the usual suspects, such as the pyramids or Colosseum, along with more fringe or lesser known constructions, such as Offa's Dyke or the 
Emperors of Bamiyan. Some of these will be possible to construct during the course of the game, such as the Tower of London or the Alhambra. All of these constructions provide unique and interesting bonuses, with some of them being represented with 3D models on the map. That's, I am a huge fan of 3D models on the map, are absolutely terrific. They look beautiful on every other uh, Paradox-based title, so that's going to be terrific to look forward to. That's it for this time, stay tuned they say, but anyway, that'll, uh, that's all from me. I've said my part as I went through it, very excited to uh, get more in-depth with these buildings. It looks like it might be an upgrade. Obviously, there's less diversification on the actual military units, but uh, there's it does seem to be more diversified in the actual buildings themselves. And obviously, the artwork is beautiful here. But anyway, that'll do for this time. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.